Good afternoon, my name is Jillian Gloria, and it is my obligation as a science, technology, engineering, and mathematically literate individual to think critically for myself and to question scientific evidence in order to prove that it is real or not. So today, I would like to begin by putting into perspective just how many humans there are on the planet and how long we've been alive. So if you would all close your eyes for me and picture Mother Earth, beautiful Mother Earth. She's been alive for 4.6 billion years. Now, let's go ahead and scale that down to 46 years. In that time, humans have only been alive for four hours. And in that four hours, just one minute ago, we started the Industrial Revolution. And in that one minute, we have destroyed over 50% of our forests. Please open your eyes. It has been confirmed by many lines of scientific evidence that there is a direct correlation in carbon dioxide, or CO2 emissions, and the increase of the Earth's temperature. So, based on the academic website for the University of Arizona, in an article titled, CO2 Concentration and Temperatures, there was a study done on the ice core records in Antarctica, and it has shown that over the past 350,000 years, the temperatures have risen by 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, I will be discussing climate change. And by the end of my speech, you will have gained a better understanding as to what exactly it is and the steps you can take if you feel affirmative action needs to be taken. I'll be highlighting three main points. First would be climate change. I will define it and let you know exactly what it is. My second point, I will be characterizing the effects of climate change and what damage has come from it. And lastly, I will list the dangers in order to educate you on if you should care or not. Now that you have heard my three main points, I'd like to move on to my first point. Climate change, what is it? So it is a common misconception that because we have common precipitation events, like snowfall, in different seasons, like spring, summer, winter, and fall, that climate change is not real. According to the academic journal, uh, uh, according to the New York Times, in an article titled, Short Answers to Hard Questions About Climate Change, it has been proven that the composition of greenhouse gases lead to more extreme weather conditions. So as carbon dioxide is released into our atmosphere, it creates essentially what would be a barrier which traps sunlight from being released back into space. Therefore, trapping the sunlight will heat up the planet. And that carbon dioxide release accounts for 82% of all greenhouse gases. Another common misconception is that climate change is just a hoax. Planet gets warmer all the time, right? Wrong. There has actually been an increase of temperature on our planet of 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that number doesn't seem very small to you and I, or very big to you and I either. But in my last slide, I will go ahead and give you a comparison of just how big that number really is. And lastly, the last fallacy is that there's no way us little humans can do anything to change our big atmosphere, right? Again, wrong. 95% of climate scientists are in agreement that climate change is real and humans are causing it. Now that you've heard my first main point, I'd like to move on to my second slide. Climate change, what damage has come from it? According to the an academic journal titled In Hot Water, Water, Weather and Global Warming, written by our Grimmler, there has been a 6.7 inch increase in sea level rise over the past hundred years, which ironically is when the Industrial Revolution started. And as you can see in our graph, it has nearly doubled in just the past 10 years, or the past decade. It, I'd 
like to move on to my last main point, climate change. Why should you care? According to the academic journal, Counterpoint, scientists know that human activities cause global warming. Written by Rich and Warhol, there has been an increase of 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit over the past century due to global warming. Now, back in my first point, I told you I would give you a comparison. So the heat emitted from humans on a daily level is directly compared to the release of 400,000 Hiroshima, Hiroshima atomic bombs. Again, that's daily. So just picture 400,000 atomic bombs going off simultaneously around the planet every day. Secondly, if nothing's done about this problem, there will be a total rise of 80 to 160 feet if all our polar ice caps melt which would lead to the submersion of multiple cities around the world, including New York, Dubai, Paris, Barcelona, and other leading economically strong countries and cities across the world that are responsible for trade and sales. And lastly, if nothing is done, it will lead to a zombie apocalypse kind of scenario, but instead of zombies eating brains, the outcome will be due to an ecological impact based on the failure, failure of our agricultural systems. Now that you've heard my last fun main point, I'd like to ask who in here, after class, will go down to the nearest Tesla building and buy a hundred K thousand dollar Tesla. <laughs> in order to reduce their CO2 emissions from their vehicle. Okay, I see a couple of you. I'm waiting for the model, that's myself. But if $100,000 is too much to ask of you college students, I'd like to ask, who in here will reduce the amount of driving by carpooling a little more often and switching to fluorescent light bulbs and also educating your friends and family on the information you heard today? Thank you. <laughs>